And that's one way to remove a stubborn thread. I just cut the rod off, drill it, and then bore it till it peels the thread out of there. So after the thread removal, I'm using my green field tap and die number 22 and a two and a half inch 12 tap there to chase the threads out, just clean them out. There is galled spots in there, that's why I had to do what I do to get it out. That's where these these big tap wrenches come in handy. Where is it at? Let's see. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop for another fabulous week of Saturday Night Special. And we got a lot of stuff to share with you. So right now it's all about the G&E Shaper. I got a lot of work that I'm doing on that machine and I got a lot of more, a lot more work that I'm going to be doing here in the near future. So we got some things to talk about regarding the G&E Shaper. I actually have two packages that arrived today, uh, actually three, I'm sorry that uh, two of them were like viewer viewer mail submitted things that is going to help me with the genie shaper and i got some parts that come in so we'll talk about that it's going to be for upcoming videos in the next week or two some things that i'm going to be working on on the shaper but it's coming along real good by the time you've seen this i'm going to have the the oil pump out video that's uh, that's already happened and as of today as i'm filming this i am still waiting on my oil and I'm very disappointed in that. I'm starting to get a little, <laughs> a little uneasy that it's taken so long. I, I ordered that. Uh, I ordered that through work, but we ordered it from Luberloy. They're the ones that had the oil that I needed, and I thought it was going to be an easy situation just to order that up. But apparently, somebody dropped the ball, and we're. It's been two weeks now, and I'm still waiting on that oil. So it's supposed to be here this week. So. Hopefully the next day or two it's going to arrive. So I got the guys working on that, uh, trying to get an update on that. So I'm waiting on the oil to get here, and we are going to refill it with fresh oil. And in the meantime, I got some more parts oil related that we're going to be working on on the shaper. I got some of that stuff right here. There's going to be some more stuff coming. I got some parts over here that I took off the machine. So we're gonna have some dedicated videos to that, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you a peek at some of the stuff that I'm working on right now. We got some parts that's come in that I'm gonna uh, have here to be able to use to work on the machine. So we'll get all that in just a minute. Other than that, I've got plenty of machine work to share with you this week. I've got some broken bolt removal, and I've also got another gearbox shaft that I machined, and th it's kind of a, uh, condensed down version of a full-fledged video you know with shorter segments so we got plenty of uh, content there to share with you this week and I got plenty of projects that's landed in my lap now for the shaper that we're gonna be getting to here real soon I know you guys are waiting to see some chips cut and believe me I'm ready to start making chips on this machine and I've just I've got to wait until the oiling system is right and then we can start running the machine so hopefully in the next week that is going to be happening and I've already got some stuff lined up to make on this machine and we're going to share it whenever it happens okay so let me go ahead and share with you a couple things this just showed up today this was a viewer gift and check this out we have the operating instruction booklet for the GNE shaper I, did, I didn't expect this. This was a surprise. I'm going to tell you who it's from. It is from OzarkToolManuals.com. And I thought I had his card. So OzarkToolManuals.com. Ray Robertson from Nixon, Missouri. There is his business card right there. So Ray, this is really nice. Thank you very much. This is a cool manual right here. And he put this in there with it. And apparently they they have a lot of manuals for machines, and they uh, scan them, copy them, and, and resell them into uh, books like this. So this is a really nice, uh, well printed book. It's uh, it's black and white, and it's got really good printing and 
and pictures in here. So this is excellent right here. This is the this is the manual for my shaper right here. There's all the information on the oil, like I had sent the guys down at the uh, at Luberloy. So got a breakdown of all the parts in the machine. So that's going to be nice to have if uh, if I have to go into it for some other things. So really nice book right there. So thank you very much, Ray. OzarkToolManuals.com. If you need a manual, go check him out. And they said to if they don't have it on there, if they don't carry it, uh, send them an email and they will see if they have it because they have a lot that they haven't scanned yet. By the way, I wanted to mention that I've got all new lighting in here in the shop. That was going to be some more of the content that I'm going to share with you this week uh, showing these new lights. I got a whole new run of LED lighting that covers the entire workbench all the way down here to the Dewalt Mill. And I have plans to continue adding more. I'm just going to get a couple at a time when I can and get them up. But, um, so we got new lighting right here and I'm looking forward to seeing how this video turns out for the first time. I, took, I had a big fan that was like right here and I took that down out of the way. I left my clip lights up here in case I need them though. So guys let me know uh, how you like the new lighting right here. I know that my workbench is, is very nicely lit up now. It's amazing the difference that some additional lights make in your shop. All the areas that there's not a light, whenever you get one up there, it kind of lights, lights up that dark spot. So this was the other box that showed up today. Now, this is from a longtime viewer. We're just going to call him Tom from Wisconsin. He said that he didn't want recognition, but I, I appreciate him doing this for me. It's very nice. Got a very nice letter. And these are some parts for the GE Shaper, okay? And he packaged them up really, really well. We're going to take this out right here. And I want you to look in there, right there. We have the cam plate that I'm missing crank handle that I'm missing and then this is the thumb screw that holds the cam plate on and I had I had reached out to my viewers and asked if anybody had one of these that I could borrow so that I could copy so now we have one Tom was very generous he has a 24 inch model uh, G&E shaper so I'm hoping that this is going to be in the, the same size for my machine I haven't even tried it yet so I'm gonna I'm gonna go fit it later and uh, make sure that it does fit this is the thumb screw that holds it on right there it just sits on the side of the machine on the rail and the screw holds it in place and this is for the automatic down feed on the tool head so the guys looked for this up in uh, Pennsylvania whenever they were getting the machine loaded up and they just could not find it so it just got misplaced in that shop he also sent this, I, I asked him if he had this, and this is one of the original crank handles right here, and I talked about making one, so we're going to make one like this. Now, I've already started this project with one of those crank handles that I showed you that I found from, my, you know, from the old shop, but it doesn't have the kick out here, so it, this has more clearance. So I plan on making another one that's going to look very similar to this. We'll probably just get one of these style handles from McMaster Car and then make this piece right here. So very cool. These are going to be some of the projects that is coming up very soon on the channel. This in particular, and we've got the thumb screw, and I've already got some material right here to make this thumb screw. I got a piece of inch and a quarter chrome rod, and we got a piece of three eighths rod right there. And that is what's going to make that thumb screw right there. And check this out. Look what I found laying around. Got a nice 2 inch by 4 inch piece of 1018 cold rolled steel. And this is the perfect size to make this right here. We got a little bit of metal removal to do on this. But guess what? We got a brand new machine sitting over here that's ready to cut some iron. And we can do it right over there on the shaper. So this is going to be an upcoming project right here, okay? Last bit before we get to the rest of our machine work. So here is the 916 square brooch that I just got in. And I had found this for sale. This is a used 916 square brooch. And I bought it from someone on the Practical Machinist forum. So this is what we're going to use to make our crank handles. So now I seem like I'm the only one in the world that has a 916 square brooch. I reached out to a few of the guys like Keith Finner and Tom and a, and a few of the other guys and nobody had one so I lucked out and I found this and he wanted 60 bucks for it which is a deal because these are like well over $250 new from, from Dumont. 
So that was a nice score. We're going to be putting this to use really soon, making these crank handles right here. All right, and I got a couple more parts. I went into the oiling system on the top of the on the top of the rams. You have the sight glasses, which I already made. Uh, one of that's this one guy right here. You see me make this. I kind of destroyed it a little bit getting it back out, so I got the fit too tight. I'm gonna make another one of these, and I made a little order through McMaster Car yesterday, and this stuff showed up today. And this is gonna be for now. I'm gonna call this a for now temporary oil sight that's gonna be used on this one right here. So I'm gonna remake this. We're gonna drill it and tap it. So that will screw in and that will provide a sight glass for that oiler on the back right there. It's clear, see-through, so all you gotta do is just know that you got oil. So this won't match the rest of them, but it'll work right here. All right, <clears throat> we got, this is some felt and this is gonna be for the ram wipers on the machine. I went ahead and pulled those off. They're in disgusting condition, so I'm gonna replace all the felt on those. We got a video coming for that too. And I also, let me grab something else here. I got some video of this stuff and you'll see it real soon. So this is the packing, the wick, the oil wick that goes into the pressurized oilers on the top of the ram. It's just, it's like string is what it's, is what it's like. So I've got this ordered and they, they shipped it from the Chicago warehouse, uh, McMaster car. Whenever this gets in, I'm going to be replacing that. This is what controls the oil flow on the top oilers there. You uh, put a bunch of this down in there and kind of compress a little bit and it limits the amount of oil that's coming through onto the ramway. All right, you've also got these guys here. These are your ramway wiper housings and that's the felt that's in there right there. I haven't pulled it out yet. So that's what this felt is going to be for is to replace that. So I'm going to take these to work tomorrow and clean them up. And we're going to have some videos of this stuff coming soon, okay? And, you know, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, uh, going through this machine and cleaning it up, getting it functioning like it's supposed to, and getting all these parts, you know, the stuff that needs to be replaced, replace it and cleaning it up. And it's going to be a nice machine when I'm through with all this. So plenty of, of G&E Shaper videos coming in the future, okay? This is one of the mounting plates out of a gearbox. And you, you can see this six hole pattern here. All six holes have a broken bolt in there. And somebody's tried to drill on them before. I don't know the story behind it. I just know that it was found this way. And they asked me if I could get them out. So let's see if we can get them out. First thing I did was dab a little bit of croil on each one of the holes just to help it out and see if the oil will help loosen up the broken bolt in there I'm going to try a left handed drill bit and just see if it backs them out we could use a little bit of heat also to try to help us but we're going to try it without heat first go see the first one worked you got it out no problems all right let's try it again That was putting up the fight there. That's a little bit off center. I was hoping it would grab it. There it goes. I had to really pull down hard on that spindle handle. But we got it. All right, so I'm using a quarter inch drill bit, by the way, and I'm just lining the drill up manually with the divot that's already in there. Just 
kind of getting the table centered. All right, let's go for it. Low gear. Come on, baby. There we go. Seems to be working pretty good. Seems like there might be a little bit of Loctite holding them in. These last couple have been pretty tight. But we're getting them. We're doing good. This hole here is a little bit drilled off center and it's kind of rounded down in there. So what I'm using is a three, a three eighths end mill just to kind of establish a flat and help find the center. Now we'll be cutting into like the first two threads of the hole, but that'll be okay. That helps me establish where the bolt is right there. Okay, all right, that was the last one. And you see the first couple threads are gone, but that'd be okay. I got all the holes cleaned up. I used the a 3 8 bottom tap there and we cleaned up all the threads, we got all the junk out of them and then this guy right there where I said that we've got a couple of threads missing now in the case that that needs to be repaired you can use one of these guys right here this is a a thread insert repair also known as a keen insert or a king insert there's a couple different trade names for them you can you can drill and tap the hole and then screw that down in there and then drive the, the, the little holding tangs down in there. That's what holds it in. All right. And you could, so you could fix it with that. I got the little tools in there to uh, drive them in. But all of these holes were not tapped all the way to the bottom of the hole. It was only about halfway down. So what I did was I tapped that one all the way to the bottom and the guys will just use a uh, a bolt that's like a quarter inch longer for that one hole. There's all the all the bolts that we got out of there and the tools that I used. Now I've shown this before this is my left hand drill index. It's a really nice set to have right here. If you're into this kind of work that like I do I'd, I'd recommend investing in one. Kind of expensive but you see, it's worth having. Okay, we're just getting the flats milled on this three and a half inch hydraulic rod. I'm making use of my edge technology tools. These are some really handy ones. I always use the, the speed handle. And on this particular setup for doing flats, I like to set up a stop. In this case, I'm using the 
the multi-axis stop and then I use my planer gauge to locate the one side after I mill the flat so that's located and we're ready to mill that side that's it there's three and a half inch rod two and a half eight threads this is the cushion on this end right there that's what slows it down whenever it retracts then you have the cushion sleeve that goes there which slows it out on the extend once it gets to the end I just finished cutting that side so these are used to hold it in a vise or uh, for a service wrench so that you can you know, screw the end on in our case we hold it here in the in the vise on the flats so that we can get our piston on there and I also use pieces of card paper in there to protect against the chrome in the in the vice jaws there so there's another hot shaft that I got to start on it's another rush gearbox repair that we got in it's got some bad spalling right here coupling side a lot of bad wear and then two really deep grooves worn there in the seal journal and a stretched keyway you see it right about there you can see it kind of moved on out on that end as well okay getting her roughed in I indicated it Drill the little center and we're going to get it roughed in close to the largest journal size and then I'll set a steady rest on it, face the end. Got it turned, faced, drilled and tapped in the center and a fresh center cut. We got one side roughed in. So this is your shaft fit where your coupling goes. We got it roughed. Seal fit, bearing fit. This is going to be the land in between the bearing and the gear. So we got I got the steady rest set. Ready to flip this thing around and get the other side roughed in now. Alright, we got her flipped around and indicated. You see we're sitting on that turned area of the, the shaft that was turned true with the rest of this area here. And we've got it indicated. Alright, so we're running good there. And we're running good on this end as well. That's me moving the... That's why these fine adjust bottoms are so nice. You can tune it right in really easy. Okay. So we need to get this in faced, drilled, centered, and rough this other side.
working on our finishing now. Got it flipped back around. Made nice true cuts on that end before I flipped it around to get it indicated with the center. Now we're just making our 20 and 15 and 10 thousandths passes to get it down to our size. That's how I'll approach all those journals. I'm looking for four and three quarters on this journal that I just finished turning. I think we got her. Seven fifty on that end. Let's check this in. Seven fifty. So this side is finished turned all except for right here. I've got to cut the radius in that corner. That is an unpolished finish there. And we hit all these journals exactly on size. I got this one skint so that we can set the steady rest to it. And then once I flip it around, We'll, uh, we'll finish this to size. I'll also have to set the steady rest there to do some radius turning on that end. There's a turned area here with a big radius, a like quarter inch radius. But I just wanted you to see that's a, that's a turn finish. It's just got a little bit of smearing on it from that coolant that dried up, you know, wiping it with the rag. But all I'll do there is just hit those with a, like 400 grit emery and then a, a, a gray scotch bright pad like that just to kind of help brighten it up. This is our journal that I just finished here. We want it 5.120 inches. That's going to give it a 1,000th interference fit inside the gear. One twenty. We're good to go. We got all the journals turned to size. I've got the radiuses cut into the corners. That's an unpolished finish there. This is a 120 millimeter fit right there. We've got that one and a half dial over. This is just an open area. And then we have our gear fit right here. I've got 1,000 interference there. This is an in-between area here. Bearing fit, seal fit, and then shaft fit, which will be like a coupling or whatever goes on the end. So I'll just do, a, again, a, a, a light polish with 400 and uh, gray scotch bright to brighten all that up, make it look really pretty. Other than that, the lay of the work is done. I got the keyway roughed in, used it an inch and a quarter roughing end mill. We got approximately, I don't know, 20, 25 thousandths to come out of the width and maybe five to ten off the bottom. We'll finish it out with that inch and a quarter end mill there. So here's the fit of our first key right there, 36 millimeter with a, just a little bit tight on the key.
put a bump down in there, stay tight. I just finished up the inch and a quarter keyway on this end, the shaft end. And then there's our gauge block stack up. This is 1.250. There she is, all finished up, our brand new gearbox shaft. This is the kind of job that I really do enjoy machining and creating, and especially when I get to share it with you guys here and I'm filming, put it on YouTube. That one actually turned out really good. All, all of my journal sizes were just spot on the way they need to. The pacemaker was turning nice and straight and true. I was hitting my sizes, both keyways hit the size that I want. I was just really proud of that shaft. It, it turned out really good. So it went from there back to the technicians, and they're going to start getting put back together. The bearing uh, gear is put down to get it rebuilt the uh, gearbox. I don't know about you, but I love the satisfaction of flipping the switch and instantly seeing a bunch more light for the very first time. I had. 100% success the very first time around. No, <laughs> no problem. So we've got our new light directly over the top of the shaper right here. And by the way, this spacing is, exact, is exactly the same as the others, which is six foot. So they want every, every third uh, rafter. So that worked out really good being right over the vise. And if you look over here, I have a whole new run of them right over the workbench. I just finished those. Luckily, my supplier is open on Saturday mornings until noon, so I ran back down there and picked up one more eight-footer and one more four-footer. That brought it all the way down to the milling machine and kind of lights in that little uh, area that holds the milling machine tools. But man, it looks good. It's probably hard to tell on video, but we got a lot better lighting up here on the, on the workbench now. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this fan down off the wall. I'll probably use my, leave my little Maxxis uh, bracket there and just put my clip light right there for whenever I do some videos. Man, look at all that. Look at all that light. I love it. And see it kind of, this right here helps with this area, kind of seeing a little better. So I do wanna get another four footer and I'll probably put the four footer right in this area here and it'll help kind of illuminate, you know, the spot where all the, the tooling is. I'm really liking that now. So hopefully that's gonna help with videos too because as you know, I usually sit right in that area to do my, to do my videos. So good improvements today and we got a lot more going on. So my next uh, goal is to go ahead and get started on the shaper start getting the sump cleaned out of it. I think I showed that already yesterday. So we need to get in there. Oh, I got it unplugged. So I need to get in there. We're gonna start cleaning this out. All right, I want you to watch the difference here. We're gonna shut them off. And since those LEDs, those new ones have a time delay on them, you can see the difference, but it's only like a second. See how much brighter it is, man? Let's do it again. It makes all the difference, man.
this is one of the gearboxes we rebuilt that I machined that vertical output shaft for. It's one that you've seen me make. We finally got it all put together. And you guys are giving it the old spin test now. Check for vibrations, all that good stuff.